what exactly it is you're looking at. You can see here, this is a, like a sphere. This is the, the, the Oort cloud. It's, it's generally spherical. Then you have the, the Kuiper disk as a flattened area that most likely just grades into the, the spherical cloud. And you can see with this graphic here, here's, this is showing the area, the region of the inner planets. And that, of course, is the region within which we reside on planet Earth. Now, the thing is, is we have to now enlarge our thinking because we generally think of, well, the solar system. Oh, yeah, it's it's the sun and nine planets. We always think of the solar system as being, well, the nine planets. But really, we have to enlarge our the scape, scope of our thinking now to include the Kuiper disk and New York cloud because they are an integral part of the whole system and how it works. Without those, we essentially, the, the whole thing wouldn't, wouldn't function at all. The point is, is that these are in a sort of a quasi-stable figuration, I would say. They're very, very sensitive, sensitive to any kind of perturbation at all. Now, what's going to happen out there is those Oort cloud comets, that zone goes almost like halfway to the nearest stars, which is three to four, five light years away. If it gets jostled, it might go one of two things. It might go further away from the sun and get captured into the orbit of another star, or it could start migrating towards the sun. Now, the Kuiper disk might be more influenced by the gravitational effects of the big four outer gaseous planets. What you're seeing here would be the first phase in the life cycle of a comet, which is they're out there essentially in deep freeze. But if something disturbs them and they start migrating in towards the solar system, then they enter another phase of their life cycle. They actually become active. And then as they come into the inner solar system or move towards the sun, they begin to wake up.